What a beautiful car you designed. This is a really awesome looking car. Well, thank you. Yeah. Could you tell us how it differs from Chiron? Well, it's a completely different animal, actually. The Chiron is our base car, let's uh -huh. say. And this year we have uh, presented the Laboratoire Noir. Uh -huh. Last year, here in Pebble Beach, we presented the Devo. So these are already two distinct different projects. Uh -huh. And now we allowed ourselves to poke into yet another completely different form language from that. It's wow. a complete departure. And we could only do that because this year is the 110th anniversary mm -hmm. of the brand. Mm -hmm. And uh, we looked at earlier on in the year with the Laboratoire Noir at the period of the 30s. Uh -huh. And uh, we wanted to look at another piece of history in the truly very colorful uh, history of Bugatti, which is the era of the 90s. Uh -huh. We call it the Italian era because yeah. all of the other Bugattis come from France, actually. And the EB110 is the only one to come out of Italy, actually. Yeah. So looking at that car uh, kind of makes sense at, in the 110 years of existence to look at the EB110, uh -huh. which it, in itself, the EB110 was named 110 because it was the 110th birthday of Ettore Bugatti right. back in the 90s. Uh -huh. So now it's 110 years of existence for our whole brand. And uh, as a, so it's a nice play on numbers actually and it also makes sense because we will make 10 cars. 10 cars. So it's one out of 10. Let's take a look. Well, to us designers, it's, it's uh, the, the most important thing before you even start to put any theme or any line on the car is the proportion of the car. Proportion. So how long, how tall, how wide, how big are the wheels, what the wheelbase is. It's very surprising. The proportion is completely different from the Chiron. Yeah. It's very sure in the front. Well, the actual wheelbase uh -huh. is the same and where the windscreen touches is the same. So that actually also represented a big challenge, right? Uh -huh. To completely differentiate all of these products. Uh -huh. uh, yet they're based on, let's say, the same uh, monocoque. And so with the EB110, it is a car that is wedge-shaped. That means the belt line, mm -hmm. it's falling to the front. Mm -hmm. Whereas all our previous cars, mm -hmm. the, the Chiron and also the Veyron, had a, had a dropping gesture, right? Mm -hmm. the, the front was a little bit higher, it was dropping to the rear. Very sovereign gesture, yes. uh, if I may say so, very unusual in the uh -huh. sports car business. And um, so the first thing to get right before we even talk about any theme is to get these wedge-shaped proportions with the, with the, with the um, belt line that is actually rising to the back. So we deliberately made the back a little bit taller, uh -huh. which normally if you go to a designer and you tell them make the back taller, you will say, no way, we want to <laughs> have it low and wide. But here we actually did it on purpose to start high and finish very low in the front. Only possible because of the Bugatti. <laughs> That's why also the whole shoe had to become much smaller, actually. Yeah. And Usually. the EB10 has a very tiny whole shoe. That's right, yeah. so it's, it's, it's a citation to the EB110 here and there again. You have to uh, understand that it was very important to us to have this not seen uh, being seen as a retro car, uh -huh. but rather to be a, a futuristic uh -huh. modern day hypercar uh -huh. that has certain elements that are inspired by the EB110 and that kind of link it up to the EB110 in that way. Wow. So for example, if you look at the body side, mm -hmm. it has a lot of sculpture going on. Mm -hmm. It still has the wedge shape uh -huh. um, like and, and, and this is the, the Bugatti line, right? Uh -huh. Interpreted in a different way this time, much so more you, angular. Usually Chiron line is like this. It's very yeah. round, yeah. Very round, but it's yeah. like very yeah. 90 yeah. reminiscent. It draws in inspiration from, from the EV110. Ah, there it is. Yeah. I see that, that design language right here. What is it supposed to be? Is it supposed to be helpful with aer aerodynamics? Th this, this feeds the engine. We now have uh, uh -huh. an upgraded engine which has 1600 horsepower uh -huh. and uh, four turbochargers, just like the EV110 had four turbochargers, so there's a nice link there as well. Wow. And uh, yeah, that feeds the, the processing air for the engine. Uh -huh. And uh, so you see this visor uh -huh. theme, which is a blacked out A pillar. It's also a reminiscence to, to the EB110 like they did it. And, it's um, like wearing a shade. Yeah, it's like yeah. a helmet yeah, visor. Whereas right? yeah. the normal Chiron, normal. Call that the normal again, <laughs> I will punch you. <laughs> <laughs> there's that A pillar. Yeah. But whereas this has a very nice round shape. Yeah, it's kind of it's blacked out. It's wrapped around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I have to say, the, the front the light is very aggressive. First of all, it had to have the the eyes had to be narrow together, like uh -huh. on the on the EB110, uh -huh. which isn't, didn't want to just block the two EB110 headlights uh -huh. in there. So it is a new interpretation, much slimmer profile, uh -huh. uh, really thin headlights, uh -huh. and integrated with an air outlet here Ooh. that uh, is perfectly functional as well. Everything on this car goes on there for a reason. It's a functional car. Mm -hmm. Functional elements of design have to be in there, and so this uh, vent actually 
is there to relieve the pressure buildup in the front wheelhouse. Uh, giving more downforce. Which gives downforce, power. that's right, yeah. And together also with the, with the vent on the bonnet, wow. everything that goes into the horseshoe goes through the main radiator in the middle, comes out the, the, the bonnet and pushes the car down in the front, together with the splitter. Mm -hmm. And if you make the horseshoe, and this is what we learned in the process actually, yeah. if you make the horseshoe a little bit smaller, like uh -huh. this one, yeah. you actually increase the distance between the horseshoe and the outer corners to put these blades in, and they really give the width. Ah. Interestingly enough, we, we didn't think about this, but actually one guy said it, uh, looking at the car, looks like a Stormship Trooper from Star Wars, right? <laughs> I thought it was interesting, we didn't think about it that uh -huh. way. but. And as all other Bugattis do, this must be the sterling silver. It is sterling silver, yeah. yeah. Why is sterling silver so important, whereas you spend so much time and energy to make it so light with carbon fiber, and it's very heavy. Yeah, it, yeah, it is a few grams more than yeah. if we would made it from carbon fiber, but this is oh. what we do not touch because it has, you see that Type 35 over there? It yeah. already had the same uh, oh. badge on, uh, crafted in oh. enamel, actually. Oh. There's a process that gives few imperfections in the red surface mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So you could also make those perfect, oh. but then the character would be lost. Mm. Right? So we, we um, stuck to the sterling silver oh. together with the enamel to actually um, preserve our identity in that respect. Oh. The same W16 engine, but a little bit quick. Upgraded, upgraded. It's, uh, it's higher rev, uh -huh. so it'll rev to 7,000 now. Uh -huh. And the upgraded turbochargers, yeah. Wow, it has 1,600. Uh, you spotted that one, yeah. yeah. Very <laughs> proudly say, you know, I'm different from Chiron. <laughs> yeah, very good. So, what did they have to do to get that much performance out of already powerful Chiron? Well, the upgraded turbochargers, as I yeah. say, and to rev it higher. Yeah, but they always knew they could do it, but they saved it up for this car. Well, saving up, I don't know. <laughs> it, takes a, it takes a lot of time to process the, the, uh -huh. the, the actual development, right? You need testing, you need to... Uh -huh. yeah, you, so you need to develop the engine that way. So uh -huh. We've introduced the, the 1500 horsepower engine. We've yeah. now thoroughly tested it, and uh -huh. this is all the result of the work from the engine. We're confident that we can push more. The carbon fiber wing is very menacing. Here, whereas the Chiron is very round and That's right. gentle. So, so this, this car is like very like attack mode, you know? Yeah, everything is for the for to get the wedge proportion into the car. Uh -huh. I'm personally I'm I'm very much in love with the back actually uh -huh. because uh, uh, the tail light is absolutely amazing. Um, Beautiful. What are they made out of? They're made out of PMMA, high temperature. Um, PMMA? Yeah. What yeah. does it stand for? Uh, I couldn't even tell you. It's some <laughs> kind of polycarbonate. <laughs> it's some high tech stuff that you know we don't even know. It's, it's secret as well. Yeah. <laughs> PMMA and this looks beautiful even at such a high daylight it looks beautiful and it's very bright and wow yeah so you see the EB110 has mm -hmm. these pill shaped uh, ventilation slots yeah. on, the, on the rear uh -huh. so that is a, a citation to that actually uh -huh. um, so you still have these shapes uh -huh. like uh, the ventilation slots in the EB110 as well as this, uh, this exhaust shape as well it's very pill shaped here as well. yeah so the story with the exhaust is um, we actually we created a lot more downforce in the front which we need to counterbalance in the rear as well so we put the wing but at the same time we also worked on the diffuser because as you know with uh, in aerodynamics uh, you you kind of you buy downforce mm -hmm. by, ta by paying for it with drag mm -hmm. so any downforce created with a diffuser mm -hmm is almost free because you don't pay with it with the drag right uh -huh. so we freed up the middle part which uh -huh. usually houses the exhaust pipes right and shifted the exhaust to the outside to free up the middle part because the middle part is much more efficient um, in, in creating the downforce wow. and uh, the inspiration for those quad exhaust uh -huh. two stacked up on top of each other uh -huh. uh, we like to call from the from the f6 lightning jet uh -huh. which had two afterburners stacked up on top of each other. You guys love the fighter you're telling you. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. like, oh, we're based on the F-16, we're based on the stealth fighter. Yeah. But I like it. I like it a lot. Can you show off the interior? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's not finished yet. Simple answer. <laughs> the funny thing is the name. How do you pronounce it perfectly? So we like to say this is the Italian era uh -huh. of, of the company, right? Uh -huh. Because every other Bugatti that you see here comes out of France. Uh -huh. So we're a French company. Uh -huh. However, the EB110 came out of Italy. Uh -huh. And that's why we pronounce the name 110 uh -huh. in Italian. Uh -huh. And so it's called Cento Dieci. Cento Dieci. Cento Dieci. So when you guys first came up with this uh, design mission, what was the assignment? What was the mission? 
Well, very broadly speaking, that we wanted to look back at the history of Bugatti mm -hmm. in the year of the anniversary mm -hmm. of 110 years of existence of the company. Uh -huh. So um, we decided to look at the era of the 30s uh -huh. with the Lava Noir, uh -huh. and we decided to pick out the era of the 90s uh -huh. uh, for this car. Wow. You guys are pushing out so many new designs so often. Is there, is there like a strategy behind it? Well, you have to also see since the arrival of Mr. Winkelmann, uh -huh. we are a very happy bunch actually because uh -huh. he put the lever on the table and uh -huh. we're full throttle uh -huh. and it, the company is thriving and we're doing so many new projects. Uh -huh. But having said that, at the same time, we are very well aware uh -huh. that we shouldn't just flood the market with a hundred projects. Uh -huh. So uh, this will be uh, the last of the coach building story for mm. a while now. Okay. So we also need time with our engineering engineering team to develop these cars and actually to bring them to market and deliver them to the customers. So, uh -huh. yeah. Very good. So out of 500 cars that Chiron's are allocated to, is it in there or is it a separate? No, those are separate. Okay, yeah. separate. And yeah. Vivo is separate. Yes. And Lava Trini Y is separate. Yeah, okay. but it's only one. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, Frank, thank you so much for showing us the car. Thank you Great for coming job, by. buddy. Thank you. This is really, really good looking and we look forward to see it on the road. Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic job. All right.